reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. They came to a place named Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me. But not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. And he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. Behold, the hour, behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. It's rare that I find a college student that maintains an ordinary sleeping schedule. Usually I find them on the lower end of the schedule where they sleep for only three to five hours a night. But occasionally you'll run across a student that sleeps over 12 hours, probably off of a few days of sleeplessness. And sometimes they go back and forth and sleep a little bit and then sleep a lot and kind of have a very irregular schedule. But to be fair, there's not a lot of reasons to sleep normally in college. Correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, but you have homework, and quizzes, and tests, labs, grad school applications, student loan applications, the list goes on. But then there's also video games. There's sledding on a Twitter hill, or an impromptu snowball fight, or maybe just staying up until the odd hours in the morning talking to your roommates. In fact, I imagine that if you kept a regular hour of sleep during college, eight hours a night, you might miss out on a few things. You might get to your fifth or fourth year and you're graduating, and you realize that you've missed out on something. You might even realize that you'll never have another experience like this again. Because after college, it's the real world, right? You have to go to work, you have to pay your taxes, you have to drive through traffic and put on your work clothes, and you fall into the routine of an ordinary life. And you do this until one day you hopefully retire. So you have to get the most out of college, right? You have to do as much as you can while you still have the, the freedom, while you still have the energy to do it. Well, Jesus is calling Peter, James, and John from the slumber of what you might call ordinary life. They were fishermen. They were regular men before Jesus came to them. But then as soon as he called them, they left their homes and they started doing something irregular. And going into a garden in the middle of the night and keeping watch while someone prays is probably the definition of an unusual thing. And yet Jesus bids them, those who are closest to him, to keep watch, to stay awake. And despite their best efforts, they fall asleep. Three times, in fact. And how easy it is to fall asleep when they're trying to pray. But I guarantee that if they had known what would happen, if they knew that at the end of the night that Jesus would be captured, tortured, and murdered, they would have found it easy to stay awake. In fact, they probably could have even fallen asleep if they had wanted to. Because they are ignorant of 
of what will happen because they are unaware of what troubles Jesus' heart, they become lazy and they forget the words of their Lord. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. St. Jerome says that we do well to watch heedfully and pray earnestly, lest we enter into temptation. For if Christ does not grant us grace, then the Judas in us betrays him. And if he departs a little from us, then the Peter in us falls asleep. Jesus is not speaking merely of physical slumber, but a slumber that takes the life out of us. Imagine if, what it would be like if you lost all your hopes and your dreams, if you felt no excitement any longer, if you no longer felt love, if you were content with yourself and no longer wanted to be better, no longer wanted to become more, your life would become a routine. I imagine the light might dim from your eyes and you would fall into a mundane existence. Jesus wants us to be awake. And we know this because in the garden, when he's praying, it's not his sins that he's praying about that are giving him agony. It's ours. It's the sins of his disciples. Jesus is laying awake in prayer, hoping that others might awaken. We are no longer asleep when we know Jesus, because then we share his sorrows and his joys. Even though the flesh is weak and we get tempted to close our eyes, the Spirit is willing. The Spirit comes alive, alive as if on fire and consumes the flesh, making us truly alive. A Spirit on fire then makes the ordinary experiences of life extraordinary. And when we come to the end of our life, we will look back and see how rich and beautiful it truly is and wish that we had not spent as much time to sleep as we did. My brothers and sisters, the hour has come. Are you awake or are you asleep?